This video will highlight the outcomes of right round window reinforcement surgery for cochlear facial nerve dehiscence. Videos of symptoms preoperatively and postoperatively as well as tuning fork testing will be included. Before presenting the case, I wanted to provide an overview of this video. First, I will discuss the consequences of vestibular asymmetries. I will then talk about third window syndrome, reviewing the phenotype, that is, the clinical and diagnostic features associated with this, review the known sites of CT positive third window syndrome, and also speculate about CT negative third window syndrome sites of location. Finally, I will present the case of this 18-year-old young woman who ultimately had right round window reinforcement surgery when she was 19. I will talk about her symptoms and recovery, diagnostic findings, the dizziness handicap inventory, and also the headache impact test. Normally, the inner ear balance receptors are paired one to another between the right and left ear. When there is an asymmetry of rotational receptors, patients will experience true rotational vertigo. If there is an asymmetry with the gravity receptors, the otolithic organs, patients will experience a sense of dizziness. Some describe it as a rocky, wavy, tilting sensation, sometimes pushed, sometimes pulled, sometimes the floor falls out from under them. And this will then trigger the autonomic nervous system, which can produce nausea, cold, clammy skin, decreased heart rate, and even vomiting. Particularly with otolithic asymmetries, the brain can become disrupted, and patients can experience cognitive dysfunction, spatial disorientation, and anxiety. Here are some of the clinical features seen in the spectrum of third window syndrome. Patients are very sensitive to loud sounds and can experience a tilting or rocking illusion of movement, nausea, dizziness, pain, headache, falls, and even spatial disorientation. They can also hear internal sounds unusually well. Their blood rushing through their carotid artery with their heartbeat. They can hear themselves breathing. A third of the patients can hear their eyes moving or blinking. Chewing can be quite loud. Their voice can be resonant. And they are able to hear low-pitched tuning forks when applied to the extremities. They can also experience cognitive dysfunction. Patients describe feeling fuzzy, foggy, spacey, out of it. Memory is poor. Concentration is impaired. They can fatigue easily. They can also experience ear pressure that is due to endolymphatic hydrops or a fluid buildup of the central compartment of the inner ear. They can also be sensitive to changes of barometric pressure and will experience a pseudoconductive hearing loss. Pulse tile tinnitus is also common. And finally, they can experience migraine headaches as well as the three variants of migraine, hemiplegic migraine, ocular migraine, and vestibular migraine. Many of the holes in the inner ear that produce third window syndrome can be seen with a high resolution temporal bone CT. These include superior semicircular canal dehiscence, posterior semicircular canal dehiscence, lateral semicircular canal dehiscence, posterior canal jugular bulb partition dehiscence, a wide vestibular aqueduct, post traumatic hypermobile stapes foot plate, as described by Arun Gadra, cochlea carotid partition dehiscence cochlea internal auditory canal dehiscence, cochlea facial nerve dehiscence, and vestibule middle ear dehiscence. What about the third window syndrome patients whose defects cannot be seen with a CAT scan? One location is possibly the medialis, the area through which the nerve fibers from the cochlea return to the brain an unrecognized cochlea facial nerve dehiscence, an unrecognized cochlea internal auditory canal dehiscence, or an unrecognized facial nerve lateral semicircular canal dehiscence as described by Dr. Jerry Gianoli. Finally, a perilymph fistula in the structures adjacent to the round window or oval window are possibilities as well. And now our case. This was an 18-year-old young woman who I saw initially, and at the time of her right round window reinforcement surgery, she was 19 years of age. 
She had had three well-documented concussion. The first when she fell backward onto a concrete floor. The second was a water park accident two weeks later. And the third was a soccer injury. She was plagued with constant nausea. She did have a history of migraine headaches. She first experienced these at the age of 18, and there was also a very strong family history. These worsened over time. However, they markedly worsened when her third window syndrome symptoms developed. To characterize this, her headache impact test score was 66, placing her in the worst class, namely that of class four. She experienced two ocular migraines and one hemiplegic migraine, but also experienced vestibular migraines on a frequent basis. This resulted in true rotational vertigo superimposed on her gravity receptor dysfunction type of vertigo. She had seen other physicians before my evaluation and other diagnoses had been considered. Post-concussive syndrome with mild traumatic brain injury, a seizure disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, as well as POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. This involves the autonomic nervous system and as mentioned earlier, the autonomic nervous system is impacted by vestibular asymmetries. These were the type of third window syndrome symptoms she experienced. She had sound induced dizziness and her balance would worsen and she would experience postural discontrol. She had an illusion of movement that she characterized as a rocky wobbly sensation. Her dizziness handicap inventory score was 40, representing a moderate handicap. And she also had right-sided autophony. Her voice resonated and seemed echoey to her. Chewing seemed loud to her. She could hear her eyes moving and blinking, and she could also hear her heartbeat in her right ear. She was experiencing cognitive dysfunction. She had a decline in her academic performance, and she felt that her memory was impaired. Through her life, she was blessed with a photographic memory, which was temporarily lost to her. Her concentration was impaired. She had difficulty with word finding and name finding, and she occasionally experienced slurred speech. She also experienced spatial disorientation. She had difficulty judging distances. She perceived a sense of detachment around other people, as if passively watching a play and she wasn't in it. But she did not have a perception of the walls or floor moving. She also did not have out-of-body experiences some patients do. She experienced anxiety, and this was quite severe for her. Although her symptoms were only on the right side, her audiogram revealed bilateral pseudoconductive hearing loss, which is typically seen with third window syndrome patients. Her cervical vestibular evoked myogenic potential thresholds were also reduced down to 70 dB, and this was true for both ears, even though her right ear was the only symptomatic ear. Her computerized dynamic posturography revealed that she had a visual and vestibular deficit type of postural disc control. She also fell multiple times in sensory organization test four, five, and six using an ankle dominant strategy. Her composite equilibrium score was abnormally low at 39, which represents 44% below normal. Finally, she had a posterior malalignment of her center of gravity with increased sway, which is typical of otolithic disorders. Her high resolution temporal bone CT revealed that she had a right cochleofacial nerve dehiscence. On the left, her facial nerve and cochlea were normal and she had no other sites of dehiscence seen on CT scan. With the images shown here, the image on the left represents an inverted high-resolution temporal bone CT in a Stenvers orientation. The cochlea is colored blue and the facial nerve colored yellow to be able to identify these structures. With the image on the right, you can see there's no bony separation between the facial nerve and the cochlea representing her right cochlea facial nerve dehiscence. Next, will be a preoperative video of her describing her symptoms. This was recorded before her right round window reinforcement surgery on 29 June 2018. So my-
my symptoms, uh, they actually really only started maybe a year or so ago. Um, I started getting ringing in my ears, uh, both of them really bad on my right, uh, to the point where I felt like I needed to cover it just to make it at least a little better. Um, I started um, only um, about a month or so ago with hemiplegic migraines where um, it would look like I was having a stroke where the from like my eyelid down on my right side um, I would uh, get numbness and then it would uh, I just would lose um, any sensation or any movement uh, I couldn't move that side of my face and I couldn't move the left like my left arm and my left leg um, I also uh, get dizzy with loud noises um, when I went to my first concert I almost passed out because the noise uh, made me so dizzy my cousin was holding on to me the whole time um, and even at work on the phone um, I have to use I can't put the phone up to my right ear I have to put the phone up to my left even then it hurts um, it's just not as bad uh, and when I did the um, audio testing uh, with the loud um, like uh, pulsing noises in my ears um, I actually started um, crying uh, I, when they did it in my right ear um, I got used to it on my left but with my right they could actually see, or see me like tearing up it it hurt so bad um, and the room was spinning um, what about inside sounds I can hear my heartbeat a lot um, that's probably the strongest sound um, when like when something's vibrating if it's close enough to me like I'll feel like I'll feel it in my head I'll feel buzzing um, but the heartbeat's definitely the worst I can it feels like it's pulsing right out of my ear does your voice sound echoey or resonant in either ear uh, always um, especially when I'm singing it, it, it's almost like feedback and what about your eyes moving or blinking um, when I, not necessarily when I move my eyes, but when I blink, um, every so often I can hear it like shutting. And do you get headaches as well? Uh, yeah, besides the hemiplegic um, migraines, uh, I have daily headaches. Um, usually I wake up in the morning with it and uh, I also get um, ocular migraines where I get aura with them or I get... Uh, I've, I, I've gotten ocular migraines a couple of times where I've gone completely blind. Um, and then other times it's just a simple aura with stripes across my vision. Um, but the headaches are really bad. They're constant at this point. Any change with your thinking? Um, I've had a lot of cognitive issues the last year or so. Um, it's it's been hard for school because I can't, uh, I've been having word finding issues and um, I can't do simple math. If you ask me to like add or subtract or divide or multiply, I, I can't, I either can't do it or I'll give you the wrong answer or it'll take me about a half hour to figure out the right answer. But for some reason I can do calculus still. Um, I got an A in calculus and I didn't even have to use it. I would only have to use a calculator for the adding and the subtracting and stuff because simple math just doesn't work. And I also, um, they told me that, or the neurologist told me that I ended up just developing ADHD, which isn't a thing. So um, it's very hard for me to, to concentrate. I get distracted very easily and um, I can't really sit still. Uh, I'm always playing with something um, in my hands because I have to, uh, and I, j I can't um, think straight most of the time. It's very hard even with the ADHD meds. I also can't tell my right from my left. Um, that one uh, just started happening maybe a couple of months ago. Um, I know what direction I'm, I'm trying to say, but it comes out the wrong one. Um, and it's just pretty much, there's just a lot of brain fog. I also wanted to highlight some of the symptoms seen 
with POTS, since these symptoms can be very similar to third window syndrome type of symptoms. Patients can experience dizziness and lightheadedness. However, this isn't sound-induced dizziness. They fatigue easily and can be exhausted. They become forgetful and have trouble focusing and often describe this as brain fog. They have headaches and body pain and aches as well as neck pain. They're very intolerant to exercise as well. So they, they also diagnosed me with POTS in 2015, but I didn't pass like all of the specific POTS tests. I only passed one or two which is why they just assumed it was POTS and then they started me on the medication and it helped. They said it was because I got deconditioned but now, you know, it, most of the symptoms are things that could be caused by something else, so. Another useful screening tool are low frequency tuning forks when applied to the knees and elbows. Typically these are 128 hertz and 256 hertz. Patients will typically hear and feel this in their head on the side of the third window syndrome. In addition, having patients stand in the Romberg position, that is with their feet together and their eyes closed if possible, and then apply the 256 hertz tuning fork to their elbow, and typically they'll exhibit increased sway and also perceive an illusion of movement that can be tilting or feeling pushed. The next video was recorded preoperatively before her right round window reinforcement surgery. I used a 256 hertz tuning fork and kept her in the Romberg position and she perceived buzzing in her head and felt herself falling to the right. What are you feeling? In the next video, one month after her surgery, she describes her post-operative symptoms. This was recorded on 26 July, 2018. Um, so it's almost a month after my surgery and uh, I've already had, I mean, since right after I've already been, I was already able to notice that um, my dizziness was gone, um, my constant nausea was gone. Um, my daily headaches went away, um, even my cognitive function is better, um, my writing skills have been better, um, and I haven't been able to hear like my heartbeat or my eyes move or anything like that. Um, I actually have some balance now. Uh, I can walk without falling over, I can close my eyes without falling over, um, everything's just been better since the surgery. Did you have any light sensitivity ahead of time? So I, I had a lot of light sensitivity um, before. I've had it for almost a year now, and now I don't need to have my, I have transitional lenses on my glasses, specifically because I'm light sensitive. Um, now it's much better. It's still there a little, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Also at this one month post-operative visit following her right round window reinforcement surgery, I repeated the tuning fork testing using the same 256 hertz tuning fork and applied it to her right elbow while standing in the Romberg position. She perceived no vibration of the sound in her head and had no illusion of movement as she did preoperatively. During this final video that will be included in this video presentation, she describes her post-operative symptoms two months after her right round window reinforcement surgery. This was recorded in September of 2018. Um, so before surgery, my symptoms um, were pretty severe. I was having daily nausea and vomiting. Um, I was having daily headaches, uh, daily dizziness. Um, I could hear my uh, eyelids, uh, you know, closing and uh, my eyes moving. And the biggest was I could hear my heartbeat. 
Um, and uh, after surgery, uh, I don't have any more daily migraines. I'm not nauseous anymore. Um, I uh, don't have um, I don't have any more dizziness. Um, even when like looking down or moving my head fast, um, I don't have any more ringing in my ears. Um, I don't uh, I don't hear my heart or my eyes move. Um, you mentioned migraine. Did you have any variants of migraine? So I started with hemiplegic migraines at the beginning of the summer, um, and uh, it was actually the right, I had the surgery on my right side, and it was actually the right part of my face, and then the left side uh, when, with uh, my arm and my leg, um, that would be uh, paralyzed. Um, and uh, after surgery, I haven't had any hemiplegic migraines. In addition to the qualitative description she provided in the videos, the Dizziness Handicap Inventory is one tool that can be used to quantify the self-perceived impact of dizziness on everyday life. This is a 25-item validated survey instrument and is also designed to quantify the effects of treatment of vestibular system disease. The rationale is that effective management should be reflected by an individual's ability to resume his or her pre-morbid vocational and recreational activities. The headache impact test is another tool that can be used to measure and quantify the impact of migraine headaches before and after intervention. This too is a self-assessment inventory that is a six item validated survey instrument. It is scored between the numbers of 36 and over 60, representing class one for the best and minimal impact to class four, which represents the worst category and maximal impact on a patient's life. I have all patients with vestibular disorders complete the dizziness handicap inventory as well as the headache impact test. Her preoperative score of the DHI was 40, representing a moderate handicap. Postoperatively, this fell to a score of two. The headache impact test placed her as a class 4 with a score of 66, and postoperatively, this dropped to a score of 49, which is class 1. In conclusion, after round window reinforcement surgery for cochleofacial nerve dehiscence, the sequelae of the vestibular asymmetries and third window syndrome symptoms can resolve. Cognitive dysfunction and spatial disorientation is reversible, autophony is reversible, nausea is reversible, as is the sound-induced dizziness or gravitational receptor dysfunction type of vertigo is reversible. Finally, migraine headaches resolve or markedly improve. This patient also had a family history of migraine and migraine headaches before she developed her third window syndrome symptoms. She markedly improved, however, following her right round window reinforcement surgery.